You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. to a new edition of Shelby County Schools Report. We're coming to you from the studios of Germantown High School Television on the Germantown High School campus. I'm Rachel Christofferson. And I'm Raina Katko. Each month, we highlight various people, programs, and events making a difference in our school system. This month's teacher feature spotlights an elementary teacher who uses her dance background to get her students excited about learning. Parents want to stay tuned for today's SCS Focus. Executive producer Allison Long is joined by Crystal Cook with the Department of Family and Community Engagement. They will discuss a new SES pilot program called FAST. Our School of the Month is Bruce Elementary. We'll explore the school's place in Memphis's civil rights history. And later, we'll introduce you to an ESL program helping parents be more involved in their students' education. But first, we'd like to introduce you to this month's Faces of SES. Interim Superintendent Dr. Joris Ray has not stopped moving since he was appointed to the position earlier this year. I sat down with Dr. Joris Ray to discuss his 90-day plan of action and where he sees Shelby County Schools moving forward. Well, Dr. Ray, we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to come talk with us. Thank you, Rachel. Anytime. Well, before we get to your 90-day plan and your vision for SES, I want our viewers to know a little bit about your background. You are a product of the Legacy Memphis City Schools. Can you talk about your experience? Yes, uh, lifelong Miffy. Um, graduated from Whitehaven High School, uh, attended University of Memphis. I uh, actually got two degrees from the University of Memphis, my bachelor's and my doctorate. Um, and uh, started teaching uh, when I was 22 years old. Uh, uh, one day coaching a Look League team and then uh, found that I had an impact on young people and uh, majored in education. Well, you've described yourself as someone who, quote, can't sit behind a podium and present. So what is your leadership style? You know, my leadership style is uh, servant leader. Um, you have to give of, your, of yourself. Uh, you have to be willing to um, follow. Um, I'm your uh, leader, but also uh, I'm the biggest student as well. Uh, you have to be able to listen and to learn from others. Well, we are four years into Destination 2025. Remind our viewers what the end goal is and where we stand right now. You know, the end goal uh, is for our students to be the best uh, in the world, but we want them to be the best for the world. Um, that's why I developed the seven next steps to um, Destination 2025. Well, in February, you did present your 90-day plan, which included seven steps toward Destination 2025. Yes, yes. And the first step is Academic Equity and Action Plan. Before we go into the specifics, what is academic equity? You know, academic equity is to ensure that all students, uh, regardless of the neighborhood or zip code, uh, deserve uh, a great school. And uh, whether you stay in Germantown or North Memphis or South Memphis, uh, you deserve a great school. So just to ensure uh, uh, teacher quality uh, uh, throughout Shelby County and that all of our students deserve uh, the best teachers and a quality education. Well, how do you plan to ensure academic equity across the district? Well, we start looking at the data uh, 
our second grade data, um, our students uh, not where they should be. Um, we want all of our students reading at or above grade level by third grade. Uh, we, we're going to put in uh, intervention or in accessory uh, periods uh, in the fall and spring, but also uh, extra support for our students throughout the summer. Not only that, looking at teacher quality and uh, professional development to ensure that our students are reading at or uh, above grade level uh, by third grade. Also, um, high school students, you know, uh, we can't have a cookie cutter approach to high school. Uh, we noticed that we're on track for uh, Destination 2025 where we want 90% graduation rate. Right now we're uh, moving uh, we are 79.4% now. Uh, however, we notice that 23% of our students, uh, graduating students, uh, only scored a 21 or higher uh, on the ACT. So we really have to look at our high schools and transform um, our high schools. Well, adding more advanced courses and options does mean that more money is needed. Where will this funding come from? Well, you know, we had to look within our budget, budget and I know we've dedicated some money to uh, optional schools. I think last year we made a, a two or three million dollar investment in um, optional to ensure uh, this year students will have uh, a, a advanced placement courses, honors courses, uh, even your school, uh, 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 International Baccalaureate. So we're looking at all options and to ensure that um, our teachers uh, are supported, our principals um, supported, but most of all, giving our students that rigorous education. And uh, we're going to put the money, because uh, uh, victory is in the classroom, and that's where we, we're going to put our dollars. Well, the second step in your plan is social emotional learning. Can you explain what you mean by that? Well, social emotional learning. Uh, we have to really look at childhood trauma and we have to look at the curriculum around social emotional learning. Uh, you know, oftentimes uh, children or students are traumatized and as adults we don't realize it. For instance, a child comes to school, head on the desk, uh, we thinking they're just sleepy or uh, not paying attention, but actually they may have been up all night caring for a younger sibling or uh, they may have been up all night because of you know something uh, going on in the neighborhood they heard shooting or gang violence uh, so we're going to train everyone within Shelby County schools uh, around adverse childhood experiences that's ACES training uh, to really look at childhood trauma to deal with the uh, root causes and not just a symptom. Symptom is your head down, but what's really going on with you? Um, I think about, you know, uh, young people who can't even study at home because of things going on in the house, uh, you know, the mom and dad issues, or, you know, just violence in the neighborhood. Um, so we're really in Shelby County Schools trying to figure out and peel back that onion and figure out what's the hurt. Um, so we can um, help our students. Well, your third step is culture building, which is centered around establishing a more respectful and positive attitude. Can you expand on this? You know, we want a culture of excellence, a uh, culture of transparency, a culture of trust. Uh, and it starts with the superintendent. Uh, it starts with how I treat uh, teachers and principals and even students. Uh, also, we have to listen. We have to listen in order to learn and get better. Um, so I want a, 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 a culture where everyone feels good about Shelby County Schools and says positive things about Shelby County Schools. Well, finally, you have been on the job for a few months now. How are you enjoying it? You know, I'm enjoying it, uh, long hours. Uh, however, I have a great supporting cast. My team is excellent, and we're focused on students. We're focusing on doing what's best for our students and Shelby County Schools as a whole. Well, Dr. Ray, this was such an informative conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.
third grade teacher, Alexia Young, says students learn better when they are moving. From chants to plays, her students at Lucy E. Campbell Elementary School are always up and moving about the classroom. Her unique approach to education is why she is our Teacher of the Month. Class, class. Yes, yes. Class, be class. Yes, she is. Peek into Alexia Young's third grade reading class and you will see kids up and moving around. I like for my students to leave my classroom. I am not the type of teacher that does most of the talking. I like that she lets us teach and she lets us learn on our own pace. Every day, students jump out of their seats, move around the classroom and belt out a reading chant. Young says that reading chants get her students excited about learning and helps them focus. It also serves another purpose. It gets them moving. It excites them to come in the classroom because they know they get to get up and do a chant and dance and sing, uh, but it's all towards their learning. This is Miss Young's fourth year at Lucy E. Campbell Elementary. Lucy Campbell is an eyes on school and we have high need uh, children here. We need teachers who um, who don't have sympathy for the children, but hold our children to a high expectation. Uh, Ms. Young does that. From the start, her class has been unconventional, but that is what has made Ms. Young stand out. Every year we've seen growth in her, uh, in her leadership, uh, in her teaching, her interaction with students. She's extremely strong, really funny, really open, um, which I didn't really expect from a mentor. I don't think that the children are ever going to come in and see a mundane lesson. She sets the bar high, she expects them to reach it, but at the same time, she's giving them what they need to reach it. I just love the way that she, she's, she's ready every day to kind of conquer the world. Teaching is more than a nine to five job for Miss Young. Her coworkers say that sometimes she is the last to leave at the end of the day. When everybody else is going home, she may still be here with babies, doing things that are outside of the curriculum, giving herself to them when she could have the time for her own personal life. And she is constantly looking for new ways to engage her students. To see her even in PD sessions, and she's like, oh, y'all do that at EL? I need to add that. You know, how does that go? Can I see y'all's protocols? I would love to add that to my own, you know, repertoire of things that I have already for the classroom. Miss Young says the various teaching techniques and styles she uses in the class are tailored to her students to make sure they have all the advantages to succeed. Whether it is visual art where they get to draw um, and write their self, color their selves, or if it's through dance, if that's what gets them motivated, they have the opportunity to dance about something dealing with reading. One of her learning tools includes rap songs. She calls it vocabulary. I just read a story about a boy named Ben on the first day of school. So I have a variety of styles to make sure that all of my students have that opportunity to learn based on their learning style. Ms. Young really breaks down stuff very easily. She breaks it down into tinier pieces where we can be able to understand and then we put it all together. When I got her home, she helped me. She helped me figure out my skills and what I'm capable of doing and reading. Another way she teaches is by taking a step back and letting her students do the instructing. I like for my students to think for themselves. I like for my students to correct each other themselves. So it allows the students to take control of the room and I'm just facilitating the structure of it but letting them teach each other without knowing that they're actually teaching each other. After spending some time with Miss Young, it's easy to see where her passion comes from, love. I'm hoping that, I guess, my impact comes from love, that once they leave third grade, that it won't be just about the reading. It will be more about, in third grade, I had a teacher that actually loved me, and because she loved me, I learned how to read. Reporting for Shelby County Schools Report, I'm Raina Katko. Now, Here's GHS TV executive producer Allison Law with this month's SCS Focus. As parents, we know it's important for students to participate in state testing, but when the results come in, it can be hard to understand the data, how it relates to the school, and how students can benefit from the data. Shelby County Schools is making it easier for parents to understand state testing results with a new program called FAST. Here to discuss how it works is Crystal Cook with the Department of Family and Community Engagement. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely, I'm glad to be here. 
So there are a lot of acronyms within Shelby County Definitely. Schools. And here we're talking about FAST. Can right. you tell us what it stands for? Yes, it stands for Family Academic School Teams. Okay, and tell us what the program aims to do. The program aims to really help parents to better understand what their students or what the children are doing in school regarding assessments. So we have parents, they help us out in so many different ways. But data can really be difficult sometimes as a parent. I find that overwhelming sometimes when I receive my daughter's MAPS assessment data and I'm looking at it and I'm trying to figure out, okay, what is it that I'm looking at and how does this relate to my child and what are her strengths and what are her deficits? So what surrounds FAST is that it's a program that we're hoping will Will help parents to better understand the data and the assessments that their students are taking in schools. Okay, and once you use that data, like how did the parents, once they break it down, how would they use that information to better help their child? So when we talk about parent, when we talk to the parents about what our, our FAST program, we talk about that parents, we know you're engaged and we want you to be further engaged and we have assessments that your students have to take. We want you to be familiar with these assessments because the assessment data can actually drive, you know, as far as in the schools, the success of the school. And so we want parents to understand the, the correlation between the assessments that the child takes and the data, the, the results of that assessment, and how it affects the school. And so we talk to them about the assessments that they are having, the children have to make. We also talk to them about what that data means to the school and how important it is for your child to be successful successful on these assessments and then in hopes of giving them tools so that they can take those tools and help this you know help the school so they can you know ensure that their child's going to be successful on that assessment once the assessments happen and the students or the parents and the schools receive the data back what how is that data used within the school system and um, how can families you know, help their child. So for example, with the MAPS assessment um, in WEA, um, after the assessment is over, then there would be a FAST meeting at the school. And then the parent would receive the specific data for their child. But then they would also talk about the data for the overall school. So what does that grade level look like? And then they would talk about, okay, so this is an area that your child is struggling in. And this is an area that we're hoping that we can get your help on. This is an area based on the assessment that says that your child is struggling in, but then these are the strengths of your child. And so the parent sees that data, internalizes it, she's got, he or she has the evidence before them, and then the school will provide them with tools to help them to whatever that area of deficit is. The parent basically learns what their role is. Mm -hmm. My child has taken this assessment and this is how I can help my child move forward because the assessment is going to reflect what the child is doing in the classroom. And what schools are participating right now in this program? Right now we only have elementary schools. We started off with 20 different elementary schools. Um, some, Just a couple of the schools, Alton Elementary is participating, Cummings Elementary. But we started just, this is a pilot program and we're hoping that we can add more schools in the future. Um, the great thing about this is that it's really just an opportunity for families to become more familiar with the data. We know that children have to take assessments, but we want the parents to understand what that means. And um, according to ESSA, which replaced No Child Left Behind, one of the big ESSA goals is that we provide different opportunities for families to become engaged with liter uh, literacy and numeracy regarding their children. And so this is an area that we feel like that we're supporting ESSA. We're trying to give our parents the tools that they need so that they could better help their children in literacy and numeracy in the classrooms. And how did the schools reach out to the parents to make sure that they participate in these meetings? Different ways. Um, some use social media. They might use different apps like the Remind Me app, Group Me. Um, you have one person in the school that acts as a liaison. We did train the principals and then they chose liaisons in the schools that could be like that point of contact. And so if the liaison, and it looks different. Um, some of our schools, a lot of our schools have family engagement specialists who may act as that liaison. But if they don't, then it could be the PLC coach or the facilitator. And so that particular person will work to communicate with those families, but then also they work with the teachers, you know, find out what's the best way that I can get, you know, get in contact with the, the, t with the parents that are inside your school and in, in your classroom. Are you finding that the parents are interested in participating and finding out? Yes, because what our team did is that we actually participated. Um, we encouraged the schools to contact us and say, you know, hey, invite us, invite us to come to a FAST meeting. And the ones that I went to, it was really awesome because you heard parents asking questions that was specifically relevant to their children. Um, you know, one of the questions that one of the moms asked was like, okay, I see that my child is struggling in comprehension. What can I do to help her? 
And then, the, and then she had tools. When she left that meeting, she had tools. So I think that that's awesome when a parent is inquiring about how they can help their child, and then they get the, the tools specifically to help their child in that particular area. If there are schools that are within Shelby County Schools who are not a part of this pilot program right now but are interested in being a part, what should they do? Contact the FACE Department. Okay. Yeah, contact our FACE Department, you know, and just let us know and say, you know what? I've heard about FAST and it sounds like a really cool thing. We don't have the kinks all worked out. It's a pilot program, but one of the things that we wanna do is that we wanna make sure that parents are informed. And the more that parents are informed, academic achievement will go up for mm -hmm. children. That's great. And when do you think you'll roll out more to the middle schools and high schools? I'm not sure. We're hoping that we can, we're actually in the talks now of what area do we go to now? You know, um, we're looking at how we have interacted with the schools and how they've participated. We're getting feedback because um, as all of the maps, um, I'm sorry, all of the uh, FAST meetings are surrounded around assessment dates. And so we're getting ready to have our last one. Um, this one in preparation for 10 Ready, it's just giving parents also tools that they can do at home home to ensure that when your child is taking that test, that physically, mentally, emotionally, that they're ready. So as the data rolls in from different schools and they show us like the participation numbers and just things like that, then we can make a decision about, okay, how do we move forward? But we wanna make sure that when we move forward that we're using the information that we're getting back from the parents and the schools that are participating in this program to guide what we do for the future. Great. Well, thank you so much for telling us about this. You know, I think knowledge is power for all Absolutely. of us. Absolutely, right. And if the parents can help the students, that can only benefit right. exactly. all of our schools. So thank you. You're welcome. Now here's Raina Katko with our School of the Month. Nearly 60 years ago, Legacy Memphis City Schools was integrated by 13 African-American students. SESR reporter Rodney McKinner tells the story of how Bruce Elementary students and faculty honor the memories of three of those heroes in our School of the Month feature. It can be a scary thing, first grade, even without the burden of making history. A half century ago, 13 pioneers accomplished something that had never been done in the city of Memphis. If Memphis 13 never happened, if those 13 brave first graders didn't take that leap of faith, I wouldn't have the opportunity to leave Bruce Elementary School. In 1961, Memphis City Schools changed forever when 13 African-American children walked into four all-white elementary schools. I simply didn't understand in the first grade how people could be so mean simply based on the color of my skin. Bruce Elementary was one of the integrated schools. Memphis chose to integrate elementary schools first because of the violence seen in other cities. They provided an example well, that this could be done without violence without massive civic disruption like we saw in other communities. Raise your hand if you remember the Memphis 13 or know who the Memphis 13 is. Administrators at Bruce Elementary have made it a point to highlight the school's place in Memphis history with photos, billboards, and this marker dedicated to Duania Kyles, Menelik Fonby, and Harry Williams. We have a history room where we make sure that we post. We have some of the different um, articles and news stories that have taken place from Bruce back in the day. Our students today need to know that it started way back a while ago, so the issues that are going on now are not new. They've been going on for a while, and they have gotten better. Commemorations every few years help keep Bruce's place in Memphis' civil rights history alive for students. A couple of years ago they came to the school and they um they said they told us about a couple of things of how this school was all white and how they um how they changed it and um how it became a better uh, a better school. I felt love in the building, which is something I didn't experience in Bruce in 1961. It's important to cherish their memory because of the example that they provided at such an early stage of the civil rights movement. The impact of the Memphis 13 can be seen today all across Shelby County nearly 60 years later. Because of them, we can be Bruce Bulldogs. We can be Shelby County Schools and we can be the scholars and the success that we want to see. Reporting for Shelby County Schools Report, I'm Rodney McKenna. An elementary school is helping its students succeed by helping their parents. Kate Bond Elementary School offers an ESL class for the parents of the students. The result? Parents are now helping with homework, participating at school, and fueling a sense of community. And that's why it's our program of the month. 
Vamos a hacer la pregunta y alguien más nos va a contestar. One of the challenges we face as educators that we have parents sometimes that don't really understand what it is that we're doing in school. The teacher is telling you things about the instructions or what's the core, what's the curriculum. It's hard for a parent who doesn't understand the English to really say, okay, I know what my child is doing. Work or works? Works. And we do have a population of parents that unfortunately are unable to communicate with the teachers and the faculty because they don't speak good English. They want to be part of their children's lives, but it's hard when there is a language barrier. I want to learn more English. They work in a office. So we needed to help parents to have access, a place where they can feel comfortable and welcome. My name is Matilde. I am from Mexico. I play with my children. This program really was brought to life by our bilingual mentor, who is Miss Martha Lissette Bailey. She is just a trendsetter, and she really wants to build a bridge between the school and the community. This is not a, um, a hard class for them, that this is easy and they can learn at their own pace. It helps me to understand more and help more. I think the one thing that touches my heart the most is that the people that are really leading this are volunteers. Uh, my classes for my teacher is very, very good. Oh my God, they're wonderful and they are committed and I know both of them care so much for the parents. Do or does? I've been through the same situation that most of the mo mothers that are coming to school, because my mom doesn't speak that much English, so I know how they feel. Um, hell, my son. When you have that, ink, that language barrier, I, I can just imagine how even more stressful that can be. I mean, I just have a heart for wanting people to really be happy and, and be able to enjoy their life stress-free. I think it's critical to have parents that understand the language so that they can support their children. I want to continue learning as much as I can learn. We try to do like basic stuff, like simple, what is your name, um, teach them body parts, uh, how to ask questions. Where is he? Okay. Is? It kind of builds on to them and is also building their vocabulary to kind of help them. And it has helped. I mean, when they come to the office and they, they're trying to speak with the teachers or they're trying to communicate with the clerical staff. They have improved, you know, when I talk, when I hear them talk. My name is Maricela. Um, Maricela. At least they're trying, you know, and, and I think their children will see that, that their parents are trying to help them. He teaches me new letters that I did not know. There it tells you that they're, they're motivated to helping her be successful. Cape Bond Elementary School is not the only school that have mixed race of nationalities here. And I could only imagine what the other schools are going through with the language barrier. I think it is critical that we do consider this district-wide. This program is an opportunity for the moms a, the the whole community. Muy bien. My name is Espejo. La pregunta fue, what is your name? We want more parents to be aware that we have offer free classes and they need to take advantage because their kids are our future. We hope you have enjoyed this month's Shelby County Schools Report. If you would like to learn more about Shelby County Schools, visit us on the web at scsk12.org. On behalf of everyone here at Germantown High School Television and Shelby County Schools, thank you for watching today's program. We'll see you next time on Shelby County Schools Report.